Hello, in this video we are going to talk about teleconverters such as this one from Canon and also speed boosters. I'm going to explain how they work internally under the hood and also why is it inevitable that if you use a teleconverter like this one you're essentially losing light. So if you have a 5.6 aperture like on this lens of the tight end it is essentially being like an equivalent of f11. It is inevitable and I'm going to explain to you why. And also if you use a speed booster how come that if you use a speed booster you're essentially like getting a bigger aperture all of a sudden? Why is it that the lens is suddenly collecting more light. Where does this light even come from? It's pretty confusing, right? So let's break it down. So I think the best way to explain this is to actually draw it out on a piece of paper. So let's imagine that the lens that we have right here is a black box that looks pretty much something like this. This is the lens. And the camera with the sensor is going to be a smaller rectangle that looks like this. This is the sensor. This is the lens. So the rays of light, when they travel normally through the lens and they hit the sensor, they look something like this. So we have rays of light coming in. Then we have some optical formula inside the lens and then they come out and they hit the sensor like this. So now if we stick a teleconverter in between the lens and the camera, so something like this, we have the camera, we have the lens and we have the teleconverter which is this white element right here that is between the lens and the camera. So it looks something like this. It could be simplified as a concave single lens element. So it looks like this. And now the rays of light that hit this part of the teleconverter are actually bent outward. So it looks something like this. We have a ray of light that comes in here and then it goes upwards. We have a ray of light that comes in here and then it comes with a smaller angle like this. This one like this, this one like this. And that way, because we are spreading out this light, then the ray that would hit this part of the sensor is now hitting a larger area of the sensor. This was the area before the teleconverter was applied and this is the area with the teleconverter applied. So because the same object now takes more space on the sensor, that's why this object is more magnified. And that pretty much is equivalent of having a longer focal length. If we have a longer focal length, then the objects appear larger on the sensor. So that's what is happening right here. But Take a look what happens with the rays of light that were hitting just the edge of the sensor before the teleconverter. This is the teleconverter right here. Before the teleconverter was applied, the ray of light that was going to hit the edge of the sensor is now actually bent outwards. So we are not capturing the entirety of this light. Some of the light gets spilled out of the area of the sensor. And because of that, we are basically reducing the density of light per area that hits the sensor right here. And the brightness of an object, how bright it appears on the sensor, is very tightly connected to how many rays of light, how many photons, or however you want to call it, how many of them are hitting a part of the sensor in a fixed amount of time. So if you have more photons reaching the sensor at the same amount of time the image is going to be brighter. If we have less amount of photons hitting the sensor the image is going to be darker and this also appears for instance if you look at, out into the night sky some stars appear to be brighter and some stars appear to be dimmer because if you have a star which is a it could be thought as a single point of light and it is emitting photons in every direction. It is emitting them like this and if you are this distance from the star the density of those photons is going to be fairly large. But if you are further away, for instance this radius, then the same photons that were hitting this area are now hitting a larger area. So we are having a less density of the photons hitting this area if we stand here. So that's why the further away a source of light is, the dimmer it is because of the density of those photons. So that's why it is inevitable that if we are spreading the light like this and we are losing some of the light, we are reducing the density of the light that hits our sensor and that's why the image appears to be darker. So the image appears to be magnified and the image appears to be darker and this could be exactly represented by having a longer focal length and a smaller aperture. So a teleconverter like this one which is 2x is going to give us twice the focal length so with this 70 to 300 we are going to have a 600 millimeters effective focal length at the tight end and also the aperture from f5.6 is going to get to f11 and that is not a flaw of this teleconverter that is the physics at work. There's nothing that could be done to overcome this. And as a side effect, because we are spreading this light, we are also actually getting a less sharper image because the details that were coming on this area of the sensor are being spread 
out again. So we are losing a bit of the sharpness. We are still getting the full resolution of the sensor because we are covering the entirety of those pixels on our digital camera with light, but we are losing a little bit of sharpness due to the fact that we are spreading out this light. And by the way, if you are interested in how I managed to fit the RF teleconverter with the Canon EOS R onto this EF70-300 because I had to use a modified adapter right here, this black element, definitely check out the video right here where I explain this entire process. It is pretty awesome. So right now let's take a look what happens if we apply a speed booster. So let's draw the diagram again. So again, we are back at the clean state. We have a lens and we have the sensor and we have nothing in between. And right now if we apply a speed booster and the speed booster could be simplified to a single convex element that looks something like this. And if we use a speed booster, then the rays of light are going to be bent the opposite direction. So instead of being spread out, they are going to be squished in. So this ray is going to travel something like this. This one is going to travel something like this. This one right here is going to travel at this angle and this one something like this. So previously we were covering this entire area with the photons that are coming from this lens and right now we squish down this area. So we have a smaller area to cover with the same amount of photons. So guess what? We are increasing the density of photons and that's why the image appears to be brighter. And that's why we are seemingly getting a bigger aperture because we are collecting the same amount of light on a smaller area and that's why this image is getting brighter. So the name Speed Booster is really a marketing marvel because people may think that they're getting this light out of nowhere, but actually what they are doing is they are just focusing this light on a smaller sensor. But guess what happens right here? What happens with this ray of light? It is getting bent and it's hitting right here. So what happens with this area of the sensor, huh? What light is hitting this area of the sensor and what light is hitting this area of the sensor? You guessed it, there is no light that will hit these areas of the sensor. And that's why it is impossible to use a full frame lens with a full frame camera and have a speed booster in between. Because if you did that, you would end up with a massive, massive vignette around the edges of the image. It would be just completely black. The same way if you applied a crop sensor lens on a full frame camera. And I did that actually. I tried to use an APS-C lens with my Canon EOS R and you can see that the entire edges of the screen were just completely black. So that's why the speed booster can only work if you have a lens that is designed to work with a bigger sensor and you use this lens with a smaller sensor camera. So for instance a full frame lens and an APS-C sensor camera, if the speed booster is designed in a way that this light will cover the size of the sensor that is on this side which could be APS-C, could be micro four thirds, then you are basically converging this light, you are getting a sharper image, a brighter image and generally higher quality. So that's why speed boosters are awesome if you have a smaller sensor camera. But if you have a full frame camera, you would have to pair it up with like a medium format lens in order to get advantage of this because like I showed you, it is impossible to use full frame lens full frame camera and a speed booster in between. And also the other effect of applying this kind of a speed booster is because previously this object that was represented by these rays of light was covering this area of the sensor. Now it is covering this area of the sensor. So the object appears to be smaller and that's why it is like an equivalent of having a smaller focal length, wider angle of view and also bigger aperture. But this is exactly what is happening under the hood. So hopefully by now you have a better understanding of how teleconverters and speed boosters work under the hood and what are the pros and cons of using that with your camera. And right now if you want to learn how I managed to fit this RF teleconverter on this EF lens, definitely check out that video by clicking on the tab right here. And also if you want to learn how curse adjustments in software work under the hood, very cool video of mine, click on the video right here. And also don't forget to subscribe right here for future videos, new videos every single week and give this video a like if you liked it, I would appreciate it and see you next time, bye bye.